All right, welcome back to the fourth and final part of our little like uh, motor driven roller project here. Um, I've been calling it an intake this entire time, but this, like I said at the beginning, this is not necessarily an intake. This is more just kind of an example of how you would um, you would design a, a series of rollers driven by uh, a motor. Um, okay, so we've got basically three things we got to do. We got to add all the fasteners. We got to add the bearings for the the needle bearings for the roller. And then we've got to add the tube nuts for this axle. So um, let's start. Let's start with the bearings, and let's go to McMaster needle bearings, needle roller shaft diameter five eighths and half inch long. Product detail. Do 3D step is fine. Hit download. Okay. Um, and then go back to our on shape. Close out of this. Um, so then we're going to hit, uh, import and then it's going to, it opens up a file dialog. You, you can't actually see it because of the recording settings, but it opens up a file dialog. Um, you know, go to your downloads folder, select the file you just downloaded and, um, you know, hit open. And then you get this dialog that pops up here, um, import with Y axis up for sure. And then combine into a single part studio. Um, and then for this particular part, I know that it comes in. Uh, actually, no, just, yeah, click OK. All right, and then it should import relatively quickly here. Yep, I'm going to move this over here, just kind of out of the way a little bit. All right, so then do our cleanup, hide planes, um, select all these. These are all going to be um, just like carbon steel as the material. And then we'll set the appearance to like, they didn't really come in there a little darker. So we'll go like this one. And then we just need to select all of these and then lump these all into a composite part. Composite part. That was pretty, yeah, okay, I missed it. All right, so then that's that's that. Um, we could change the name. So like, like I said earlier in one of our other projects, normally, um, you would do this into like the RoboCharger's standard like like um, COTS documents that we've got on our in our team. Um, but for the CAD class, I, it's not worth having all of you guys upload the same file to the to that place or whatever. So for now, we're just importing them into each document for each week. However, there is actually a standardized repository for these parts. And for example, I believe we used this exact needle bearing on our our shooter last year. So you would not need to re-download this from McMaster. You would just go open that um, document and just insert it into your assembly. So um, that's just a note for during the build season. And then every team is going to have a different, you know, arrangement. Um, also, some of this stuff, um, some of these standard parts, you know, might get added to <clears throat> MKCAD eventually. All right. So we'll go back to our assembly here. Let's go insert. Um, and then we need to filter for composite parts and hide normal parts, uh, expand the part studio. Oh, I need to rename this, but anyways, I have to place one of those there and one of those there. Click OK. Run back over here. Collapse this, expand this, right click, rename, Control C, uh, Control V. That's good enough. It's got the part number in it, which is really all that we need. Okay, so then I'm going to hide. Hide that, hide that, get them out of our way. All right, so then M for mate, do a fasten mate, and I'm just gonna mate it to the bottom, like kind of edge of this pocket here. Flip the orientation. Same thing for this guy, pick the front of that radius there, and then just constrain that to the bottom there and flip that as well. Okay, so that's the bearings, and then now we need the tube nuts. So these are called tube connecting nuts in McMaster, but they're a little bit hard to find. Uh, notice, not tube connector nuts. I believe they're tube connecting, so I'm just going to search for that, and then they'll come up. They don't, it doesn't like come up, like if I do, if I just do these tube connector nuts, I believe it doesn't. Oh, I guess it is the same thing. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, so you just got to search by this exactly. These these things are a little hard to find on McMaster because they don't show up in a lot of search results. So this is one of those parts that like can be a little hard to navigate to. Um, okay, so then we want for OD 5 eighths and for tube ID 0.53 to 0.54. Uh, this is a little, this is not quite the right size. So, oh, I think I remember what the deal with these is. Um, let's undo this for a second. Yeah, this is the smallest one that they sell. So there's a couple of things you can do here for these tube nuts. Uh, I, I really prefer to use the 3 8 tube instead of this 5 8 because these tube nuts um, are like the little flanges here for these tube nuts are very, very small. And so they don't have a very big range that they can collapse in. So there's a couple of options with these tube nuts. The first one is you can just shove them in the tube and just force them in and they'll go in and it'll be okay. Um, the only thing you got to worry about is it's possible that they expand the aluminum tube a little bit and then this needle bearing doesn't want to go on very well. Um, I believe what we did for our shooter last year was we actually bored out the tube a little bit. We just we just threw this in the lathe, took a boring bar, and just took the in, took a little bit of material off the inside of the tube because this inside is 0 0.500, um, and it wants 0 0.530 at least. And so you take off, you know, 15 thou per side, right? That gets you your 30 thou on the diameter, and and that's enough to make this. Um, this tube nut fit in within the spec that they are giving here. That being said, I'm pretty sure you can also just force it in and it'll be okay. So um, that's just something to note. With the three quarter one, you don't have to do any of that weirdness. You just buy the tube nut, it works, and you just press it in. Um, okay, so we're gonna download the 3D step file. No, oh, it failed for some reason. Download, there it goes. Okay, and then um, same process over here. Um, basically just Import, file dialog shows up, select the file, oops, hit, select the file, <laughs> there we go, hit open, and then this dialog pops up, combine into single part studio, orient with Y axis up, okay, and it should import pretty quickly here, we'll move this over, and then clean up, hide these, assign material as a, uh, Urban steel, and then uh, assign head appearance to like I don't know dark kind of a dark color. Um, all right, and then in the assembly we're gonna go to insert. Uh, I guess it's not a composite part, so we don't need to filter. Place one there and one on the other side. And click OK. All right, so then to do these, I'm actually gonna constrain them. So you wanna press these, you don't wanna just like press them flush. Like ideally you press them slightly below flush because you really want, you don't want the tube nut to make contact with the polycarb plate. You really want the actual tube itself to make contact. And then this is just there to provide the threads that you're threading into. Um, so then, so basically um, the way that I usually constrain these is I usually just, uh, use this one of these arcs on these little flanges um, and constrain them to be slightly below flush, basically. Oops, this is upside down now. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to do M for fasten mate, select that edge, and select this guy. And then I want to do an offset of like minus 0.0625. So now it's like slightly in the tube. You know, it's actually like sticking out a little bit because the, the whole point of these little tabs is that they bend over when you press them in the tube. And they kind of dig into the aluminum a little bit. Okay, and then this guy, I'm gonna do the same thing. Select the center of this. So the mate connector's in the middle, obviously. Um, and then go there, and go minus 0.65. All right, and that should be good. Okay, and then, um, all right, so then that's uh, that's the the basically the the motion parts done. Um, now what we have to do is just uh, add all the fasteners. So for this guy, let's um, I'm gonna look through this tube here real quick. Try to select the back side of that tube nut. I want to get an idea what length of screw we need. So you can see the other tube nut here. 
make it just the right angle. So I'm selected this face here, and then from there to there is like a little over half an inch, and that's a quarter inch, uh, roughly a quarter inch plate. So we need like a three quarters of an inch screw to fasten these in place. You can really go as long as you want, right? It's just unnecessary weight. Okay, um, so let's show these parts again. And I'm gonna grab all these and just uh, put them in a folder. Just call it components. And then we'll have another one for fasteners just to keep this a little clean because there's gonna be a bunch of fasteners. Okay, so uh, let's hide that because we're going to need to get at this hole a little later so um all right uh let's select this guy and this guy these both need three quarter inch long screws and we'll go to standard content these are going to be quarter 20 button head so uh, it just remembers the last selection i had so bolts and screws socket heads socket button heads three quarter inch long hardened alloy steel black insert Okay, good deal. All right, and then close out of that. And then we're going to do uh, these two here. These don't need washers or anything. So we're going to do those, insert. And then these will be half inch long. We made the we made this little area here a quarter inch deep, and a quarter inch of thread engagement is enough for these. So we'll just go half inch long on those. And then hit insert. Okay, and then for these guys here, we need to put washers in first. So we'll go to insert, we'll go to washers, type A plain washers. I think that's fine. Narrow, stainless plain, I think that's okay. Insert, yep, it's, as long as it's bigger than the hex, you're fine. Um, so those are okay. And then we'll come back in. Um, we did an experiment where we, we selected the mate connectors in a previous video, and that does not work. You have to select the actual geometry. And then um, we want to go back to bolts and screws. It should remember where we were. Yep, and then half inch is fine for these as well. So go ahead and insert that. All right, so then we just have a bunch of, of uh, screws for these standoffs and then the motor screws. And then I'm not going to bother putting the rivet in for this, unless MKCAD has a rivet model. Ooh, they do. Okay, I guess I'll go ahead and put the rivet in. Uh, we'll do that last though. Um, okay, so let's do let's do the motor screws. So this is from here to the motor face should be like a little over, a little under one and a quarter, quarter inch thread engagement in the motor is kind of the good rule of thumb. So we'll just do one and a half inch screws here, and we'll do button heads as well. And they're number tens. So insert. Go back to 1032 and one and a half. Or now let's do a black insert. Okay, good. And then all of these can be half inch screws. Um, mm, maybe I take that back. Uh, these might want to be five eighths, a little more thread engagement in the aluminum. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'll go ahead and just do five eighths ones because I feel a little more comfortable with a little more thread engagement on these. You, you, with these screws here, because you can't use Loctite for these because you're using polycarb here, and the Loctite will, will ruin the polycarb. Um, you can get like special uh, special Loctite that's compatible with polycarb, but it's really expensive and it's kind of hard to find. Um, so generally speaking, no Loctite on these. So a little longer screw will just help a little more thread engagement. If it starts to vibrate loose, you get a little more you get a little more time before the screw falls out. So um, we'll just go ahead and do 5 eighths ones here. Uh, 0.65. Insert. Okay, and let's hide all meat connectors. These here. Good, good, good. Standoffs motor. Um, could put the little snap ring on here, but the snap ring comes with this part. So from a bomb perspective, like a like a bill of materials perspective, um, it's actually okay to not put this retaining ring in CAD because it actually just comes with this pulley. And so when you look at like the parts list here, like and you're like going through this list, like trying to order everything that's in your assembly, um, you're not actually gonna miss ordering something that you need because the key and the little clip come with it. Um, 
However, you know, you might want to put the little clip in here just for the, the completeness of the CAD model from a weight perspective and whatever, right? Just getting every little detail taken care of. Um, we're not going to bother doing that today just because it's kind of out of scope for what we're doing. Okay, um, we can go ahead and show that roller tube that we hid. And obviously you're getting some like depth fighting here just from a graphical perspective because it's line on line with the inside of this, this roller. So you get some weird graphical stuff going on. Um, all right, so then let's go ahead and add these rivets. Um, configurable rivets. Oh, interesting. You can set the flange width and the flange height. Let's look at aluminum domed head blind rivets. 3 sixteenths. Head height is 064. Yeah, it's a 16th, right? And then head diameter is 394. Although the longer ones are smaller. That's interesting. So it's like 10 millimeters-ish. Not quite. 394. Uh, grip length needs to be longer than a quarter. Needs to be this probably, probably 3 eighths realistically. Uh, although quarter to th the quarter to three eighths one, yeah, so it's probably it's probably three seven five. It kind of doesn't matter. It's mostly just there to represent the thing. It's not actually super functional in the CAD. Okay, let's insert one of those. Let's see what this looks like. All right, let's let's go ahead and constrain this in before we commit to this. Um, the one thing we should do. No, I'll just offset it. Okay, uh, mate. There, to there, fit and offset by minus 0 0.65. And then this like pulley just like barely misses it, but it's actually okay. It's not the end of the world if they make like a little bit of contact. Um, obviously the dome of this rivet is the only thing keeping these from hitting because they're actually the same height, but that's okay. Um, all right, so let's just grab the rest of these and just paste them down and then go back through and constrain. All right, mates, there, come on. Oh my gosh, select, there we go. And then offset, minus 0.65, good. Okay, this looks okay on the back side. Obviously this would actually mushroom out a little bit, but it's okay. Um, also, I noticed like it's not actually grip the you put in grip length, but it doesn't actually because the the rivet's actually slightly longer than this for for the proper grip length. So that configuration's a little weird. It's fine. Um, okay, so minus 0 0.65, and then do the same thing. Kind of bothers me that I'm manually typing in this offset on each one of these because I'd prefer they all be based on like the same feature, but. The amount of time it would take to actually do that would not be worth the robustness of the CAD model that you're saving or that you're creating. Just not worth. Okay, so then, um, yeah, so that's basically how we retain the bearing. Um, when you're riveting into plastic like this, sometimes you can get away with it. We can just rivet like this. Typically, what I would do, what I'd actually do, is I would put a number 10 washer on the backside and then I would actually rivet to the number 10 washer because the rivets. A lot of times the plastic is not stiff enough to actually hold the rivet in place and the rivet will just mushroom like inside of the hole and it's just a bad connection. So adding a little washer on this side, um, a number 10 washer fits these 3 16 rivets just fine. So adding a little washer and riveting to that is typically a better choice. Um, it does force you to use a slightly longer grip length rivet, but it's fine for what you're working on here. Okay, so um, just double check, make sure we've got all the features that we wanted. Um, yeah, this all looks good. This is basically the process. So, um, you know, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, obviously, this is the last uh, project for this, the CAD class this year. So, so thank you for making this far. If you, if you made it this far in the class, um, good job. Um, you know, thanks for following along. And um, I'll see you guys in the future for future classes. So have a good one.